Please welcome Mr. Brian Passe. Yeah. To the show. Uh, you were on Big Bang Theory last night, yeah. and your 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 character on the show is hilarious. You you're a geologist, uh-huh. and, uh huh, and a at, rock nerd, a rock nerd, and uh, what, that, that and I was talking to you off air about that show. And originally when it came on, I was like, uh, I don't know, and then it became clear that there is a a strong geek base in the writers. Oh, room for there. sure. Because yeah. they were getting it all right, and that's what brought me into it. Yeah, no, there's giant nerds in that <laughs> writing room. <laughs> right. Sure. Yeah, and, guys from Futurama and places like that, and they're really smart and very geeky. Very geeky, and they yeah, actually. The cast isn't. <laughs> really? So nobody on the show. No, because I've been that... there a lot, and, and like the first couple of times we'd be hanging out, and like there was a comic book store actually on the set. Yeah. And I'm, you know, looking at everything in there, and I was asking a couple of the guys, I was like, do you like this stuff? And they're like, no, nah, we go to Comic Con <laughs> once a year, and that's it. Like, oh my God. They pull it uh, off, though. Yeah, who's, yeah, ever, yeah. who's ever writing the, you know, the, again, you say the writers are, are geeks, so that, that makes mm-hmm. a difference, but. Uh, on that comic book set, and uh, much to my wife's chagrin, I will point to things. I have that. I have that piece. I have that piece. Wow. She's like, oh, my God, shut up, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> she, it's it's, it's really bad. Yes, I, I, there's a certain way you're supposed to read comics, and I don't know what that is. Are you supposed to look at the picture first? <laughs> you're supposed to read the dialogue first? It, it, can you do either I or? cannot help you. No. <laughs> but you guys heard that. figure it out. It, it, it's I've heard no, that I've before. I've never heard that. Yeah, that, no, it, it's confusing if you first pick it up, but if you start reading a few titles, <laughs> no, about where the panels are sure. and, and and where the right. uh, the the word bubbles. Oh, are. Oh, right, the way yeah, yeah the that, way, that the storytelling. Yeah, yeah, I always find that my eye, my eye goes naturally to where it's supposed to go, especially yeah. if you're dealing with with good writers and, and good right. illustrators. That you read the, a few, the normal flow will out. take you there. There's some Deadpool's I could recommend. <laughs> that yeah. you wrote. How many did They're you pretty, write? Forty five. Wow. Yeah. Your stuff is exceptionally good. Oh, I have to tell you, I, I love what you do with the character, and I know we talked about the, the first movie and you were happy with the uh, with the outcome. I mean, I do, keep thinking at some point they're going to use one of our characters, and if they do, you know, a Who would you one, want them to use? Well, uh, our the woman we had in Mary, Shiklo, which was, you know, I would think would be a cool wife. It's so nerdy. But. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, it is She's isn't. the queen of the vampires. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I just think it would be a good juxtaposition for the character. It would be very cool, but you, you no, you know what? And here's here's the the most telling thing is you, you, the case can no longer be made that this is just peripheral stuff. This right now, and we I mentioned Thor Ragnarok before he came on. This is what is fueling Hollywood. Oh yeah, this is sure. it. Yeah, there's not a lot of other big movies. All the big movies are geeky movies, right? right? Yeah, for sure. And yeah. also, the best ones and the most successful ones are the ones that are deeper and have more meaning, and that are characters that are well written. And, right, right. And I was talking with Nick Murphy, who's a, you know he's a fellow nerd too. But these universes that exist beyond the movie, the characters that exist right. beyond the movie, they make the entire movie more compelling. Right. And then, like for me, as I was watching Thor, and they got it so right. You know, it, it, part of my head was exploding because I was like, this is something I've always wanted. Right. You know, and no one's ever gotten it right, but these guys are getting it right. Like, uh, whoever's involved at Marvel and, you know. Well, Kevin Feige? Yeah, but Fe- all the Feige? guys. Yeah, Feige. Feige yeah. So, so deal with this, and because we, we have been through, we're, we're, we're old enough to remember the failed Thor attempt on the Hulk TV series. Right. The guy who is... Who was basically like a beach bum, mm-hmm. uh, you know, with with a horrible plastic-looking uh, hammer, and it was just all the failed attempts. Spider-Man basically repelling down a building. Right. It, it, they, this was stuff they could never pull off. Now, not only they're not, not only they're pulling it off right now, they're nailing it to the original imagery that we loved to yeah. begin with. Well, yeah, it had that Jack Kirby feeling. Oh, yeah. Like, we're <laughs> making this so geeky. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of geeky. I love when I do a nerd voice when I'm being nerdy. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> like I need to. Right. Right. Like, yeah. uh, your, your nerd poker. Uh-huh. This has gotten such, such a buzz. Please explain to people um, uh, what goes on here. Well, it's just Dungeons and Dragons, but... Uh, I've always looked at D&D as, like, it's just a geeky form of poker because <laughs> for me and my friends, it's more about the hang than it is the actual game, you know, and that's what a lot of D&D nerds don't like my podcast because uh, we play D&D, but we also mess around. And it's just, light and loose. Yeah, it's just a bunch of dudes hanging out in a room. And, and is it an ongoing story? I'm sorry, because yeah. I don't know. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you guys show up every week, it, it, it continues from the week prior. 
Yeah, and our dungeon master has to remind us because I have a, a short attention span and, and I've smoked some stuff over the years. <laughs> Just yeah. a bit. Oh, who surprised you? Who's come out of the woodworks as a D&D well, &D fan? we had on our show, we had Joe Manganiello on our show. And, uh, that my, guy's wild. My wife was, like, calling all her friends, like, <laughs> you know, he's in my living room. <laughs> like, he's uh, Sophia Vergara and Magic over. Mike and yeah, True Blood. Yeah. Yeah. He's super handsome. Yeah. Like, me, we're all geeks and we're, we were all looking at him going, he's dreamy. <laughs> And then, and then he pulled out his box of uh, figures, and he's got he's more into Dungeons and Dragons than anybody I know, than anybody I've ever played with. Like, and Pat Oswalt used to uh, paint his own figures. Oh my god! But Manganello has like this whole, and it's all they're alphabetized and it's super like OCD. And <laughs> did, did you start making so fun? I, I felt pretty cool. I'm like, ah, look at this geek. <laughs> I'm kind of the badass in the room. You know? That's great. That's it awesome. is what a nerd. <laughs> I don't understand it, at, and I've tried to play, and I've gotten really right. I, pissed off. I think I'm too, to I'm too stupid. <laughs> I, my, my attention I, span is I'm too borderline. Short. I'm okay. like, yeah, I'm, I feel like I'm the well, in that room. I'm the dumbest guy in that room. And and with my son, my son's eight years old, and he's not into D and D yet, but he's getting into all the other stuff, Star Wars and comic books, and right. he's already schooling me. Like we're talking about Star Wars, and this is something I've liked for forty years, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and he knows more about it already yeah. than I do. It, it, <laughs> Well, you know, he, he, he enters into it, though, with the full catalog ready to go. Right. We had to get it through attrition and, you know, and, and incrementally. Right, right, and, right. And, that's... and his hard drive hasn't been uh, affected by anything yet. <laughs> right, you know right. what I mean? But I... <laughs> his memory. <laughs> he's totally, he's fully his memory's wired. memory's better. Yeah, yeah but, but it, it, it also, it, it's part of the deal. The, the games are, um, like, you see them in the back of the comic book stores, and they're playing. I'm like, man, this looks, it looks like it's so cool, and right. you can get lost in it, but I, I can't. I find my I would find myself playing with the figures too much, like the little you know that that's me. Like I I, I remember the game Mousetrap as a kid. I never played the game. I just played with the mousetrap. Nice. You know, so it, it's all, it's all part you of the deal. Too dumb for mousetrap. <laughs> I was too <laughs> dumb for mousetrap. <laughs> so that shows you why I can't succeed at this. What are the what are the games? What are the things? Uh, are are you into on that level? The D and D. Are you Magic the Gathering as well? Or are they two no, separate camps? I. It's not even that. It's like I'm so obsessive that certain things I've stayed away from. Like I never got into World of Warcraft because I just knew my wife would never see me again <laughs> and probably divorce me. And That's... same same thing with Magic the Gathering. I think if I got into it, I would have all the cards and I'd yeah. be on eBay buying them in the middle of the night. <laughs> oh, I gotta get the wand of whatever and you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yesterday my wife is going through our closet. She's getting her coat to go outside and she's. She pulls out. I bought the. I bought this jacket from the Rocketeer, Kathy. Oh this leather God. jacket because I got the helmet. She pulls it out and she goes, "What? What is this?" <laughs> and it's, it's so small. Well, it goes with the helmet. It goes so. with the helmet. That's exactly what I said. Wives don't understand that. <laughs> my my son told me last night. He goes, "Dad, he's he's 17 years old." He goes, "Did you know that there's a rumor?" That if you stay a virgin until you're 30, you have wizardly powers. <laughs> you're like, no, no, I'm no, sorry. honey. <laughs> it was actually, it was pretty damn wow. funny. Wow. So that maybe they're holding out for that. Some of the geeks. Maybe aren't. it's possible. Oh, oh, I never heard that one. <laughs> yeah, I didn't either. I made it to 21, and now I'm <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of it close up. Magic, yeah, I got at least. pretty close. <laughs> oh, Seventh level mage. So Did you get started in it by just like doing your own little fan fiction, uh, just for fun, and then in work? comic books? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, then start showing it to people, you know? No, or? I mean, I got in because I was into it, you know, and I was already a comic, and so I was hanging out with Marvel guys and DC guys at Comic-Con every year, and okay. they just became my friends. And then I did this other thing for Image first uh, with my writing partner who had... He and I, he'd grown up working at a, a comic book store out in Jersey, and when he moved out to L.A., he and I became friends. Oh, okay. With, uh, Jerry Duggan. And, uh, yeah, we just wrote that book on our own. And then once we did that, Marvel kind of was like, well, you guys know what you're doing. Do you want to write Deadpool? And, it, for yeah, the way it came up. You must have crapped like, yourself when I they... I did, <laughs> yeah, yeah. For but God's I still sake. had to, like... Even though they, they wanted to give me the job, I still had to prove that I was worthy. Like, so I had to give them, like, the first year of stories. So we had to do work to actually get the gig. I'm, I remember, because they, they, listen, there's the, the longstanding tradition, and it was very hard to get into that, that group. I, I remember the story of, of, a, of, a, of a guy who was a writer who ended up writing for Mad Magazine over the year, and that was revered, Mad Magazine. To get mm -hmm. in there, it took forever. It was like, it was like Parliament. Right, right. You almost had to, you know... Uh, go through that process, but uh, once you're in, I mean, so do they ever 
bring up the topic of other potential characters. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I've been told I can do a Star Wars book if I want to. Wow. You know, any of the Marvel stuff. But it's just coming up with the idea because you don't want to just, you know, half-ass it with that kind of thing. Sure. Because that was the thing with Deadpool always was I was worried about, you know, making the nerdy fans mad. (laughs) And Punisher fans, a lot of those guys own guns. (laughs) So uh, you don't want to make Punisher fans mad. Yeah. Ex-military dudes that are uh, like, oh, you messed up Frank Castle, brother. (laughs) And I'm like, oh, man. You can't, Star Wars you can handle. Yeah, yeah. When a dude shows up at the well, I don't know. Star Wars nerds are pretty hardcore. Yeah. When you go out because you are doing so much, and we described you as a modern day Da Vinci. When you go out and you're performing at uh, comedy clubs, wh- what is the composition of the audience uh, coming to see you? Is it a lot of? Is it more nerds? Is it more TV fans? Fans of your TV work? TV? It's both. And yeah. I mean, I can see. I notice my fans because they look like me. <laughs> you know, a lot of black T-shirts and facial hair, right. and, and uh, um. Hunched a little bit. Breasts, maybe. Breasts. <laughs> maybe they haven't taken care of themselves. Breasts. A lot of a lot of doughy foods in their diet. You know? I don't know. I'm not judging. No, it's the more <laughs> yeah. the merrier. I've lost a lot, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you look good. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, you're a big time rocker. You've been to any concerts this season? I went Tom to Petty. Tom Petty's last show. You, you did? did? Yeah, the Hollywood yeah, Bowl. Hollywood Bowl. And no then kidding. the following week, he was dead. And like, there's no way I would have, you know, like if you would have said, man, this is his last show, he didn't seem, you know. Like one right. foot. Were you so glad you went though? Oh, absolutely. But now, but that taught me. I'm like, I'll never say no again. Like anybody who comes through, I'll be like, that guy might die so. <laughs> <laughs> unless they're young. But, yeah. Who's who's on the list? Who's on the got to get to oh, list? I don't for you? even know. I mean, well, like if Floyd ever gets back together or Zeppelin or any of those, obviously. But there's not too many. Tom Petty was one of the only. I had never seen him, and I'm so glad I did. Have you seen the Stones? Yeah, it was the same question. Yeah, yeah, I saw them in the old days. Okay. Yeah, yeah I saw them with uh, Guns N' Roses and uh, 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 Living Color uh, in like 90... That's a hell of a show. Yeah, was it 1990, 1989 That, that was 90... a triple bill? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Ed mentioned Floyd. My, uh, my son, my youngest son is 15. He's into music, so I'm about ready to have the dark side of the moon experience. I'm going to turn him on to that. Right. So we're going to go, and, and the way I, I remember listening to that album from beginning to end, we're going to go, we're going to the dark room, light a candle, sit back, and Ludes. just... and Ludes. No. <laughs> we're not going to smoke weed, but but we're going to we're gonna listen to that. I can't wait to turn him on to and that. And then he'll really like it when he smokes weed. Right, exactly. That's I'm just, this is step one. Yeah, so yeah. We'll get to that later. There's, I don't know. Just dip your feet in. And, <laughs> mm-hmm. When I'm not around, check it out on your sure. own. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Where's that experience coming from now where you, where you could that used to be a real until you talk about the religious experience of in the dark mm-hmm. with right. the turntable and the whole thing and I'm, I'm going to now in the darkness see the music and that you don't get it anymore there's no albums anymore yeah that's no. why it's not going to happen anymore they don't do laser light shows anymore either. And I used to love were, laser light those shows. Were badass. <laughs> uh, they, and, no, no matter who they were playing. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. It could have been Little River Band. It would still work. <laughs> eh. <But laughs> maybe not. Rush, Rush yes. Pink, yeah, Pink yeah, Floyd yeah. was made for laser. I went to a laser Rush Floyd. one back in the day. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. In, in San Francisco. Yeah. I thought oh, I went to Seattle Sounds wasted. and it was. Awesome. It was Pearl Jam, Nirvana. Oh, that's um, a good one. Uh, Allison Chain, Soundgarden. It was awesome. The problem with the laser light shows is so the seats were so, they're planetarium seats. So if you went late at night, you were going to fall asleep because they were. Right. Yep. Because you lay back. But yeah. they're probably better now. I would think there's been some advancements in laser. <laughs> you would hope. Because like, back then it was just like they would write Rush with a laser <laughs> right, right, right. and then spin it around. Right, so you see what Rush right. looked like backwards. And you'd be like, wow. Well, then they that's did. amazing. They did 3D laser lights <laughs> yeah, where you yeah. wear the glass. Do you remember that? No, yeah, no, that I was for out a brief that. period. Yeah, uh, yes. and so thanks for coming by. Yeah, again, thanks man. for having me. Always, and enjoy guys. your time in Philadelphia, thanks, man. Brian Posehn. Yeah. Go.